name is Gilly Grant and I live in Israel. I've lived here for seven years and I have two sons in Australia. My grandparents were Orthodox Jews. They used to go to synagogue every week. They were brought up in the synagogue and they lived in London and they owned a hotel, hotels. They had three daughters, one of whom was my mother and she was the black sheep of the family. So she was the naughty one. So she married somebody not Jewish and she had four children, four children. And we grew up not in the synagogue, but not in the church. We grew up with no religion, no faith. She just used to teach us how to pray in Hebrew, that was all. But we had a very difficult childhood because my mother married again and she had a husband that was very unkind and, very, and quite violent. So all four of us grew up quite in, in quite a scary, frightening atmosphere. And, um, but when I was 15, one of my older sisters heard the story of Yeshua and how God had sent him to, to live um, and die for us. And that if we believed in his name, we would receive uh, salvation. We never heard about salvation or Yeshua or anything because we were completely agnostic. You know, we didn't know anything. And our, and our lives were pretty much, we did what we wanted, and that wasn't always good. And poor, my poor mum used to worry about us all the time because my brother was involved in drugs. Um, my, my two sisters and I had many boyfriends, and, and so we, were, we lived quite a wild life, really. But when my first sister got born again, she began to pray for the rest of the family, and she prayed and prayed. She began praying for my other sister, and within probably two years, this sister got saved as well. And my mum, being Jewish, said, Oy vey, why are my children becoming Christians? They're Jewish. You're Jewish. What are you doing? So then, then they, both sisters started to pray for me. And I, had, I was married, and my husband got killed in a car accident. And so I was really, really heartbroken. And I had been looking to the, for the Lord for about five years. Um, my sisters had been telling me and praying for me, and I wanted to believe. But when it says, um, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, I didn't know that that meant the Jews too. We were told by all the Christians that we were Christ killers. So if we killed Christ, of course, he didn't come and die for us. So I heard the gospel over and over again, over a period of six years. I even went to church, and when they said, who wants to become a believer, I put my hand up and went down the front at least six times. And I never felt anything. And so I, I just thought, well, obviously it's not for us, for Jews. But then after the death of my husband, I, I was so sad. It felt like my right arm was cut off and I couldn't do anything, I didn't enjoy anything anymore. And I, I gave, turned my life over to the Lord because I thought, I'm so unhappy. I can't be unhappy by believing that Jesus is the Messiah. And so I, I said, I prayed, Lord, if you're there and I don't believe you are, please show me if you're sure it really is the Messiah. And I suddenly got a picture of a long dark tunnel, which is what I felt I was in. And at the end was a light and it was Yeshua. And so I believed. And my mum was very angry because another daughter, three daughters now, were believers. And at that time, my brother had been in trouble for drugs because he was, he was addicted to heroin. Because we'd had such a difficult childhood, he, he just didn't know where, what to do. He didn't feel loved. He didn't feel wanted. He felt very rejected. And so he turned to drugs. And so we started to pray for him. And we prayed, the three sisters prayed and prayed and prayed. And suddenly he, he saw a light. He heard the gospel as if it was for the first time. He heard it many times, but he rejected it. He didn't want it. And then he tried to bro break into a chemist, into a pharmacy and steal drugs. And he got put into prison. And so we used to pray for him every month, every week, every month. And we used to go and visit him. And when he was in his cell one day, he looked up at the window and he saw Yeshua, he saw the light, and he knew it was the Messiah. And so he got on his knees and he asked Yeshua into his life too. 
And my mum, he was the favourite of the whole family because Jewish mamas love their sons. So he, he was the favourite, so she was really upset when he, he converted, basically. But, but she said, if he comes out of prison and he doesn't take drugs anymore, I'll believe in Jesus too. And that's exactly what happened. He came out of prison, he never touched drugs again, and she became a believer as well. But for the first year, my mum was so funny, she couldn't mention the name of Jesus because in Judaism, we're told he's a curse to our people because there's been so much anti-Semitism around his name. And so my mum couldn't say his name for the first year, but after the first year, she was fine and she, she was, we were all born again. So it was, it was it's a wonderful testimony because God saves even the black sheep. He leaves the 99 sheep and goes after the one. Well, we, we were, there were four children. My mum had four children and we were not, we were not brought up in the synagogue. She was, she had to learn Hebrew. She, when she was a girl, she had to go to Hebrew school. And it, she, she felt that it was pushed down her throat so much that when she had her children, she didn't want to teach them anything. She wanted to wait until they got to a certain age and then they would um, decide for themselves. So when the four of us got born again, our lives changed overnight we stopped uh, smoking we stopped drinking my brother stopped taking drugs and we that God gave us all such a deep joy that he had sent his only son to save us even though we were Jewish and so our lives are they can never be complete as Jews unless we know the identity of the Messiah if until we know that Jesus is our Messiah we can never be fulfilled and complete so now, when, when, when we were converted to Christianity, we left Judaism behind. We pushed everything behind us, and so did my mother. And it was quite a few years before we realized that we were still Jewish, and we could believe in Jesus and not have to uh, become somebody else. And so I found myself in Australia with my two sons, Daniel and Benjamin. Please pray for them, because they've wandered away a little bit. Um, and we, once they grew up, uh, while they were growing up, I decided to incorporate Christianity and Judaism in my home. So I used to celebrate Passover and Sukkot and Shavuot, and they used to do the prayers with me, and we used to sing the songs and dance. It was, it was really beautiful how God began to restore my faith. It was like something I'd never had, then I had Christianity, and then he restored me to full Messianic Judaism, and my boys as well. So when they, when they grew up and left home, I was left alone, and I thought, Lord, I, I prayed and said, Lord, what would you like me to do? Because I'm only 54, I'm young, and I, I, can, I was a nurse for 30 years, and I could have still carried on in Australia for, for, for nursing. But I'd heard him very clearly say, Gilly, I want you to make Aliyah, and I want you to go live in the land of your forefathers, and I want to use you there. And he gave me a few scriptures, and I, I, I applied for, to, to make Aliyah, to come and live here and to emigrate, and to get an Israeli passport. And I came, I was only allowed to bring one suitcase, nothing else. No, I didn't bring any furniture or anything from my old life, just one, one suitcase. And I started life here. And I thought, oh, I'll just be a nurse because that's what I've always been. So I applied to become here. Uh, I applied to do nursing here. And God shut the door. He shut the door and they said, no, you can't use your qualification here. You'll need to work something else. So I was really angry with God. So I was walking up Jaffa Street and I was saying, God, how could you, Lord? You, you asked me to give you my son's give away all my friends in Australia, my home, my furniture, my car, and now my job, my, my occupation, my career. And he said to me very clearly, Gilly, when you were in Australia and you had all your friends or your family, your car and your job, were you happy? And I said, no, Lord, I wasn't happy. Not really. I didn't belong in Australia. And then, so, and he said to me, and since you've been living in Israel, and you still have no, no job yet, no family, nothing. Are you, have you been happy? And I said, very happy, Lord. 
I've been so full of joy to be restored to the land of my ancestors. So he said, I will find you another job. And so I, I, um, I, did, I've never, I didn't work as a nurse. I'm now assistant director at an organization which is a charity called Pro-Life. And we save babies from abortion. And so now I'm, I've got my best job I've ever had. I'm living the life I, I never lived. And I'm, I'm, I've never been happier. So although it's been a great challenge to come and live in another country with another language, if it's what God wants you to do, he provides everything you need. Um, when I became a believer, it was very hard for me to walk as a believer because we had, all the children had been through terrible abuse as children. We had a really evil stepfather. And so when God catches you and brings you in, he doesn't want to leave you in the pain that you're in. He wants to heal you. And so over the years, I've experienced so much healing. And it's, it's amazing when God heals you in the depths of your soul, how whole you can feel. So it doesn't matter what you've experienced, whether you've been abused or neglected or rejected. God, as deep as your pain goes, God can heal you deeper. And um, I can say both my sisters and my brother and I receive not only salvation, not only cleansing, but complete healing and restoration. And so I want to say to all of the viewers here that whatever your problem is, if you're going through anything, God is the answer. Yeshua is the answer for you. Thank you.